Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. It's like um, I don't think there's anything wrong with with chasing external things like the Lamborghini <laughs> or the big following, the social status. You know, those can all be like great secondary benefits. But I think a lot of this generation, like they're so smart, man. Kids today. That's why when people say like millennials are idiots or they're dumb, they're the dumbest generation. I'm like, no, they're not, dude. They have a lot of information at their disposal. <laughs> I think where they kind of get misguided is to your point, man, there's nobody there um, to kind of support them and, and, you know, teach them to appreciate the process of like yeah, you're going into work and, and you enjoy it. You know, it's not just I think that's, the external stuff. It's, it's, it's when people take pride in the kind of mm-hmm. the task that they do. Prime example, I was with my wife in Glasgow, which is a town in Scotland. It's again, very working class. And we were just walking around the city on like a city break and there was a taxi driver and he was polishing the inside of the door frame and he took such pride in his vehicle that he wanted to be spotless on the outside but even the stuff that nobody else sees but what i loved and it was just the fact that he obviously takes such pride in his craft that even if nobody else ever sees it he knows (laughs) and i think often you know it's hard that when so when i grew up we grew up in the global scheme, it's not poor, but I was still raised by a single parent with two boys. And it was, you know, it was tough. She worked multiple kind of jobs. Mm-hmm. But it was almost that when, uh, obviously you have motor shows and stuff, and we have them again in the UK. Mm-hmm. And the first one I ever went to, I think it's actually the only one I've ever been to. And it was when they'd launched the Porsche Boxster. And this is obviously the convertible soft top. It's a bit more affordable okay. than the 911. But this is probably going back to the mid late 90s and i remember going to this motor show and i saw this car and i just I, there was never in a million years could i ever afford one or have one but it was just this object that i even have photos of me as a kid next to it because that's what kids do so then fast forward uh to when i was 32 i became managing director of an international company but actually i was able to buy one so i bought a brand new porsche And it was the going through the whole process and it was just an absolute dream for me because I never ever thought I could do it. But what was really quite interesting was that I managed two of my big life goals. One was to become managing director or CEO, I guess as they call it in the US, um, and also buy a brand new Porsche. And I achieved them both within six months. But what was quite funny was that as the childhood me, I never thought I could ever get to that level. So it was a really big tick off the box. But actually, fast forward six months, it was it was six months a year. I'd really enjoyed it. I'd been on road trips. I'd done all this great stuff. But actually, I'd kind of done it, if that makes sense. So I ticked the box. I'd enjoyed it. I'd, I had the self-fulfillment of achieving a certain thing. And then I just move on to the next goal. And actually, I was lucky. I, w- I managed to sell it at a profit. But it was just, it was the principle of people's goals change over time. You know, nobody has set fixed. I guess some people do Olympians and stuff. But it's almost, right. it's the fact that when you actually embrace that, now i'm trying to you know achieve a lot more kind of social good in the world and you know have a much bigger impact and that's actually where i get my joy and fulfillment from not just rolexes and mercedes and houses and holidays it's actually it's it's the joy when people get value from something you've created yeah, yeah. but that, you know it's not that the 32 year old me was wrong it's just that the 38 year old me has evolved i've moved past it that now i don't care what people think what car i drive I drive a, a eight year old Kia with a dent in the door because all my money goes back into the business that I'm in in seven months, 22 different countries, but the feedback is really good. And again, just going back to the blue, blue car thing is that I think that chip on my shoulder that in the past when I was growing up, I would have loved to have done a proper MBA and gone to certain colleges or whatever, but for whatever reason, I could just never afford it. So now the fact that I've hopefully took all of this really good business education brought it together had it like a certificate basically that we, in, in england we have something called the cpd which is continued professional development body but it's been properly like stamp of approval and then i give over 50 percent of my courses away for free people in india china ukraine uh, poland the us all over the world and it's just to help give people a lift up to help them achieve whatever their goal is doesn't matter what their goal is but I happily do that and put my money towards that because that's what makes me happy. And I love the positive feedback I get back in return much more than having a nicer car in the drive. And it's just, but my point is that over time, I think people's aims and goals just change. So yeah. there's absolutely nothing wrong with the 20 year olds wanting the Lamborghini. It's just knowing that actually one day, if you work hard, you will get one. Mm-hmm. But then pretty quick, you'll be like, okay, what's next? Yeah. And it's that is the whole life hack that we kind of get that I'm sure after your time in the military and also a lot of stuff you've done with mental health in the past, 
the ability and the feedback when people actually say, look, Joey, you really helped me out with that. You got me through a really tough time. I appreciate you for what you did when sharing your journey. Mm -hmm. That probably means a lot more than $2,000 paycheck for some consultancy work. Do you know what I mean? And it's that yeah. when you really figure out that game is almost what I'm now playing mm -hmm. that I enjoy it. It is what it is. So it's, um, God, man, it's, yeah, it's awesome when you say it like that. Did you read the, um, the book by John Maxwell, put your dream to the test, Steve? Does that sound familiar? No, no. no. So I read this book about a month ago and it's, you know, it's one, of, I, I hate to say like, it's one of the best books I ever read, but it did, it did a great job the whole purpose of the book is to get somebody clarity on what their, their dream is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. whether that's starting a business, um, mm -hmm. doing what you're doing, becoming a managing director or management consultant now. Um, and it's outlined in 10 questions and you go through them each, you know, the first one is ownership question. Uh, chapter two is the clarity question, but the one that you were speaking to just now, I think it's chapter eight is the significance question. And that was where, I know for me around 2017, that's when I started my business. I was in it for the external. It was like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I was about to be 30 years old. I had discovered the, the coaching business and the industry. And I was like, man, I can make a lot of money doing this. And then I kind of started volunteering and, and doing things for the mental health community, doing things for the military veteran community where I wasn't getting paid anything. And that's mm -hmm. where that really started to come up to what you were saying, where it's like, this is what's actually fulfilling, you know, to the point where I probably neglected my financial goals a little too much because I was just so focused on giving back because to your point, there was no better feeling, man, than after yeah. I'd finish like a 60 minute keynote at, at the, the high school I used to go to. And then kids came up to me after and, and thanked me and asked me questions. And it's like, you know, how can I serve you is, is my mentality. Mm -hmm. How can I make you better? And there was no price tag on that. I wasn't getting paid to yeah, do yeah. it, but, um, but like, don't get me wrong. So I, I still have the Rolex and I've got the nice house <laughs> and whatever, but the point is that's not why I'm doing it. 